about typhoon high and survivors in the Philippines, Ormak and Tacloban joined City's volunteer training seminars. 132 die homes in Maharas, Honduras are completed for victims of the 2011 flood. Welcome to Die Headlines. I'm Mary Lee. Thank you for joining us. As Tsuji's emergency relief work has come to an end in the Philippines, Tsuji volunteers in both Ormoc and Tacloban held volunteer training seminars for local residents to learn more about the Tsuji Foundation. Before sunrise at 5.30 in the morning, 16 city volunteers are at Slate Normal University to get ready for the first volunteer training seminar in Tacloban City of the Philippines. How much time do you walk here? More 50, 50 minutes, one hour. As long as I can volunteer and help others, I will be very happy. The drizzling rain and long distances do not deter local residents who are determined to participate in the event. One by one, crowds of people pour into the seminar venue. My wish is for these people who will be trained to also help uh, the people of Tacloban or the people of Leyte. The blind Pablo Emesco, associate professor at Late Normal University, is compassionate and wise at heart. He was the one who made the distributions possible in December for tens of thousands of disaster survivors. We may have different religions, but we live under one blue sky, sharing that we should be one in union, we should be together. Knowing that there are no religious or ethnic boundaries in city, nearly 2,000 local residents, over 700 more than the 1,250 anticipated, show up at the training seminar venue. Volunteers quickly bring chairs to accommodate the unexpected crowds. I want to join Tsuji's big family. Many bodhisattvas came with a heart of gratitude. Upon learning of our training program, they wanted to contribute their share and take part in the seminar. Participants feel the warmth and love of Tsuji through the sound language song of one family. As they put on the grey volunteer uniforms, a sense of hope and liveliness is also being restored here in Tacloban. Meanwhile, in Omak City, Tsuji volunteers ready 1,000 chairs for participants of the volunteer training seminar. At first, we were a bit worried because only some 400 participants showed up. Soon, local residents fill up all the empty chairs, with some even sitting on the grandstand seats. Following city's cash for work program, the first two volunteer training seminars here in Omark attracted a total of 7,500 participants. I am very grateful to Master Zheng Yan, though I have never met her in person. I want to learn more about Tsuji, so I am here to take part in the seminar. Among the participants, Glinda made sure to finish her chores before coming to attend Tsuji's events. She was so excited that she did not sleep the whole night. I learned the value of life and how to treat others with love despite coming from different faiths. We're sharing Tsuji's humanitarian spirit with them in hopes of inspiring compassion in their hearts. Though 90% of the residents in Omak are Catholic, religious barriers are nowhere in evidence here today. Also in the Philippines, previously Tsuji helped erect 34 prefabricated classrooms in the city of Tacloban and Ormoc. And on January 11th, the 8th relief mission team from Taiwan arrived in Tacloban to follow up on the progress of the prefab classrooms while also inspecting other schools in the vicinity that may need assistance. Upon arriving in Manila, 20 volunteers from Taiwan immediately board a chartered plane and head for Tacloban City. The team arrives at their destination an hour later, only to be greeted by a heavy downpour outside. However, the rain does not dispel their enthusiasm, as volunteers immediately set off to the construction site to inspect the progress of the prefabricated classrooms. I'm currently in Tacloban City, San Joaquin, where Typhoon Haiyan destroyed this elementary school beyond recognition. Of the school's 500 students, 67 lost their lives. Two months since the disaster, the lives of residents seem to be returning to normal. However, just across the street, the San Joaquin Elementary School still lie in ruins. Seeing the volunteers arrive, children rush over to greet them. <laughs> Oh. Huh? Oh, 
There is mud everywhere. The only place not covered by mud are the basketball courts. So we decided to set up three prefab classrooms there. Trying to fulfill the school's needs and the children's yearning for school, volunteers do the best they can. Although the ongoing rain hampered the progress of assembling the prefab classrooms, however, it gave the Tiji volunteers from the construction team a chance to review and improve the overall quality of the structure. Our next destination is Omak. We want to equip the residents there with technical skills so that they will be able to operate on their own. Understanding just how important it is for children to return to school as soon as possible, local residents brave the rain to make up for lost time. Concerned about the residents' safety while working in the rain, volunteers come up with an idea. It's for their protection, otherwise if it gets wet, it will blow. A true friend is known in times of adversity. It is hoped that in the coming days, these cities may hear the sound of children's laughter in classrooms once again. Donations to help disaster survivors in the Philippines continue to pour into the city foundation as both South Africa and New York residents give to help the less fortunate. Local city volunteers in South Africa take to the streets in Tambisa, while those in New York sent out letters to ask for donations. <laughs> To help those suffering from Typhoon Haiyan, New York City volunteers sent out over 1,300 letters asking for donations. The response the office received was overwhelming, especially from Hurricane Sandy survivors. After we mailed them, we had about 10 responses a day, sometimes even 20. Some of last year's Hurricane Sandy disaster survivors sent checks, others sent us their field bamboo coin banks. No matter what method, we hope this compassion for others can continue. Letters and donations of gratitude came from areas that city helped in the aftermath of Hurricane Sandy, including the Rockaways and Staten Island. Many of our volunteers were able to turn this affinity into more than just a single donation. They have inspired residents to join as city members and expanded this one charitable act to influence society at large. Meanwhile, city volunteers in South Africa are hitting the streets to inspire locals to give a little. Tambisa is 20 kilometers north from Johannesburg, and every month, city volunteers will pay this area a visit to care for their residents. They haven't got mothers, some of them. Their mothers, they haven't got children. Local city volunteer Salamina brought the news of the disaster in the Philippines to inspire community residents' compassion. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Helping her to canvas for donations are city care recipients, like Nandipa, who has mobility issues but nonetheless is here doing her part. From the bottom of my heart, I, I did it with my heart and love, and I hope they'll, they'll, they'll get the help they need. And this group of Tsichings was eager to participate to continue the cycle of love. After the school finals, they were keen to help. They had heard about the disaster in the Philippines, so all of our new shoot scholarship recipients wanted to participate. It's this sort of enthusiasm that inspires local businessmen, those passing by in the car, or even strangers on the street to pull out their money and donate to the less fortunate. In Malaysia's Kota Balu, a new recycling point in Tamparuli town was opened half a year ago. The ground was provided by city volunteer Zhu Zhengzhong and his wife. Thanks to the couple's selfless contribution, the recycling point has become one of the most popular recycling sites in Kota Kinabalu. Located in Tamparuli town, this is Tsuji's 18th recycling point in Kota Kinabalu, which opened six months ago. The premises was provided by Tsuji volunteer Zhu Zhengzhong. 
After I joined Siji, I learned that life is impermanent, so we need to seize the opportunity to sow the field of blessings and invite members of our community to join our ranks. Drew's family members, including his mother, wife, and siblings, all support his volunteer work and join him in recycling too. With this recycling point, our neighbors can bring their recyclables here. Even though we don't make money from sorting recyclables, it doesn't matter. Without this recycling point, these valuable resources are discarded as garbage. That will be a waste. Several local residents come regularly to lend a helping hand. Joining other volunteers in practicing recycling makes me happy, and I love it. I know as we sort recyclables, we are at the same time helping more people like myself or those who are worse off than I am. Motivated by the selfless spirit of the Zhu family, more and more residents contribute a little of their efforts to safeguard our environment. Back in October of 2011, torrential rain caused extensive flooding in the Central American country of Honduras. City volunteers from the U.S. came and enlisted the help of local resident Zhang Hongcai to carry out disaster relief and rebuilding in the hard-hit Choluteca. Then in 2012, 28 prefabricated homes were completed in Moncovia's Manjaras. And now two years later, another 132 permanent Da'ai homes have been completed to shelter the flood victims. Wow. It is a beautiful January day in Honduras, and 12 city volunteers from the United States are in Moncovia's Manjaras once again. Local volunteer Zhang Hongcai introduces the newly completed Dai community and its occupants to his U.S. counterparts, who are here to celebrate the completion of 160 homes. It is better to have a compassionate heart than to own a big house. These Dai homes to residents in the United States may be worse off than their garage, but under the same circumstances, for the residents of Honduras, these homes are invaluable treasures. These people are so simple, so pure. They express their joy through their words and expressions, and you can tell that they are genuinely happy from the bottom of their heart. En mi vida, he sido un ingeniero. I am an engineer. In my life, I have taken on many projects, of which some were over several million U.S. dollars. However, I have learned the most from this small project. I must thank you all. I'm truly overjoyed. Now that you have your own home, my greatest wish has been realized. Thank you. When people interact with one another, what is the most important is the love inside each person's heart. So yes, I believe they really feel the love I have for them. And I can feel inside that they understand. And when you can understand each other like this, that is, I must thank you, Engineer Zhang Hongcai. He had to build three more houses. One of them belongs to me. Now my house is complete. I feel that I'm very fortunate and blessed. I have never dreamed of owning my own home, a home surrounded by four walls and a roof. Now I can finally tell myself that if it rains tomorrow, it's all right because I can find shelter inside my house. Now that I have received aid, it's time to reciprocate. From the bottom of my heart, I truly want to give. Love circulates between those who give and those who receive. 
In the one year it took to complete the homes, Manhara's residents have become part of Zhang Hongcai's Cixi family. Besides a ceremony to celebrate the completion of permanent Dai homes, U.S. Cixi volunteers and others also held a year in blessing ceremony and training seminar. Some two years ago, Honduras volunteer Zhang Hongcai could only muster 20 residents to help him with flood relief distributions. Now with the completion of the Dai community in Manjaras, over 700 local residents took part in the year in blessing ceremony. This was all thanks to Zhang's relentlessness. At Cixi's year and blessing ceremony in the village of Manjaras in Honduras. The village's children choir serenades one city song after another, calming hearts with their innocent voice. Parents and their children are also brought closer together through a tea offering ceremony. Always working alongside his father, Zhang Youqing also respectfully offers a cup of tea to his father, Zhang Hongcai. Over the past two years, the young man witnessed his father's transformation while twirling over the new Dai community in Mongharas. For his efforts over the past couple of years to my father, today is the most important. I know what he went through has humbled him. He has really changed a lot. From the U.S., Ge Jijue befriended Zhang Hongcai during the flood relief of 2011. In time, the two became as close as brothers and always cheered each other on. He said, when many of the problems and problems, at times when he ran into troubles, he couldn't wait to go home to his study and meditate in front of Master Zhen Yan's photo. My heart ached for him when I heard about this. I told him, Hong Cai, this is your challenge, but it is also a great opportunity. Continue on, even though the road is tough, just keep Master Zhen Yan in your heart and you shall overcome. Seeing him on the stage today hugging his team members, the Markovia volunteers, I believe all the U.S. volunteers were moved to tears. This has been an arduous journey. In Honduras, Cixi's work has only just begun. Though it will be a long road, Zhang Hongcai will now walk it alone. In Jordan, as the temperature is now dropping below zero degrees Celsius at night, Cixi volunteers who were worried for the members of the Bedouin tribe brought winter aid supplies to help some 220 families in a few areas, including Wadi Rum, a famous tourist destination. Wadi Rum, the biggest dry desert south of Jordan, features sandstone and granite rocks that stand as tall as castles. The desert is known to many as the Valley of the Moon and the magnificent scenery offered at sunset has attracted many tourists over the years. However, with few visitors following the Syrian political unrest, it is city volunteers who are here instead with winter aid supplies. This is the first time we're holding an aid distribution here at Wadi Ram. It feels really special. Less tourists visiting means less income for the locals. Thus, to help, city volunteers are distributing 20 kilo bags of rice, cooking oil and daily necessities. Besides Wadi Rom, Jordan city volunteers also travel to Wadi Fenen, al Thaigra and al south of the capital of Amman, to hold aid distributions. Despite their harsh living conditions, the children are all smiles upon receiving candies from the volunteers. Our sister is teaching them recycling concepts. Apart from food supplies, city volunteers also provide boxes of winter clothing. Moved by city's help, the youngsters help decorate the venue, while the adults bow to Master Zhen Yan's portraits to express their gratitude. The village head, like previous years, take out one filled bamboo coin bank to continue the cycle of love. <laughs> Though having to travel long distances, city volunteers bring love and warmth to Jordan's needy residents in their times of need. Also holding winter aid distributions are city volunteers in China. The Angels in Blue and White recently provided aid for 2,660 needy households in Chengdu City of Fujian Province. Inspired by the volunteers' selfless dedication, several local residents also showed up to help out.
这家，阿弟来去，喜欢来啊，来去过，行，行路来，行路来哦，行路久啊。Like this senior, several aid recipients arrived at the distribution site as early as 5 o'clock in the morning to pick up Siji's relief items. Considerate volunteers prepared ginger tea and the snacks to warm their stomachs and hearts. Among the local volunteers is Li Wenhai, a successful businessman who decided to join his wife in helping out at the distribution site. Seeing so many people in need, we learn how blessed we are. I saw a woman calling a senior resident grandma. I thought they are related, but later I realized that she is actually a city volunteer. Seeing how you treat everyone like your family really moved me. The volunteer's sincere care and love was well received by Grandpa Du, who was so touched by Master Zhenyan's consolation letter that he read it countless times. Master Zhenyan is truly great. <laughs> Seeing how city volunteers treat each recipient like their own family, countless local volunteers decide to join the effort. As members of the public, we should do our part to show more compassion and love to our fellow citizens. Whether you are able or disabled, you can do your part for the less fortunate. When I was helping carrying bags of rice, I learned that everything is difficult at the start. However, once you go through the difficult part, everything will become easier and smoother. Through their selfless dedication to the aid distribution, volunteers young and old have become even more determined to pay their love forward. In affluent Shenzhen resides a humble cobbler, Wang Guoming, who suffered an accident when young. The accident left a lasting impression on his body, hindering his height and breathing. Although short in stature, his spirit is not, and his sense of responsibility and optimism is twice that of a normal person. In Shenzhen, Guangdong province, Wang Guoming's shoe repair shop gets many repeat customers. Due to an accident when young, Wang's height and chest cavity was impaired. Now even breathing is a problem. Today is a little cold. I'm having a hard time breathing. Yes, right here. Although disabled physically, his determination has not been affected. First rule of doing business is learning how to be a good person. Be honest, don't cheat or lie. The medical expenses that comes with this condition does not worry him, as with his own two hands, Wang manages to make ends meet. Counting his blessings, he is glad to have a roof over his head. I slept among the trees for a year. At night, the rats would bite my toes. I also slept underneath bridges. When it rained, my blankets would get washed away in the flash floods. It was all for my family. He has really done so much for this family. Honestly, other normal husbands might not have been able to do as much as he has. Wang's motivation comes from the love of his family, and his decision to sign an organ donation card is another of his gifts to society. At the end of today's show, we will leave you with these images. Thank you for watching Dial Headlines. Goodbye.